The value of table grapes depends greatly on their visual appearance. External skin browning of white grapes is an undesirable defect that can result in downgrades of quality and price paid for the fruit. This short Inno Grape video takes a closer look at the role skin microcracks play in the development of external browning. A specific type of external browning, called net-like or streak browning, appears as necrotic, dashed-like streaks that progress from the blossom end towards the cap stem of the berry. This type of browning can be severe in certain years. In 2010 and 2011, high rates of skin browning were observed on Thompson seedless grapes in Israel. The severity prompted researchers to closely examine the damage and investigate its causes. Microscope observations of the brown streaks showed that they all contained skin cracks. The cracks were described as microcracks because they did not penetrate beyond the epidermal cells and there were no apparent cell separation events below them. The longitudinal cracking pattern observed was typical of elongated grapes like Thompson seedless. Berries with severe skin browning weighed significantly less than berries with no browning. The greater weight loss from berries with browning suggests that the cuticle layer, a thin wax coating that covers the berry surface, was compromised. Damage to the protective cuticle layer exposes the delicate underlying cells, making them vulnerable to dehydration. Dehydrated cells and membranes leak and result in oxidation reactions that form the brown pigments that reduce fruit appearance and value. The researchers hypothesised that the high level of skin browning could be a result of more intensive pest control spray programs. To determine if insecticide sprays were responsible for browning, the researchers hand sprayed and dipped berries in various insecticide solutions plus a non-ionic surfactant and compared the incidence of skin browning to berries treated with water and untreated dry berries. They found an association with insecticides and increased incidence of micro-cracking and browning. However, water alone also enhanced cracking and skin browning. The study pointed to the possibility that surfactants and chemical formulation could be responsible for compromising the cuticle, inducing micro-cracking and browning. But it also raised questions about berry firmness and surface moisture absorption and its role in causing micro-cracks. Researchers surveyed 100 commercial Thompson seedless vineyards during ripening and several risk factors for browning emerged. Browning was higher in net-covered vineyards and in vineyards with dense canopy where air movement is slower and humidity is higher. Within vineyards, browning was more severe on the inner side of bunches, which is attributed to poor air movement, and on the bottom of bunches, where liquid accumulates following a chemical spray. All these situations contribute to prolonged wetting of the berries or parts of berries, conditions favourable for berry cracking. Another important risk factor revealed during the survey was the association between berry firmness and browning. Firmer berries had more severe browning. Firm berries may be more susceptible because the skin and cuticle are stretched to maximum capacity. Further absorption of water from spray solution or condensation temporarily increases berry volume and internal turgor pressure. These actions may induce cuticular micro cracks resulting in a higher rate of skin browning. Based on this work, prevention of net-like or streak browning should include choosing chemical formulations and wetting agents carefully so as to not disrupt the waxy bloom and cuticle, avoid unnecessary wetting of the ripening fruit and improve ventilation within the fruit zone to reduce humidity and accelerate drying time. This video is brought to you by InnoGrape, a table grape extension program supported by the Australian Table Grape Association with funding from the Foundation for Rural and Regional Renewal and the William Buckland Foundation.